Summer 1942. 400 million people of Europe are ruled by the German army. Summer 1942. The German army rules from the Mediterranean to the Arctic, from the Atlantic to the Caspian Sea. From the English Channel to Stalingrad, Europe is German. It is to be one Europe. All the cultures are to be one. All the governments are to be one. One government to last 1,000 years under one leader. England, late summer 1943. Four engine long range bombers, B 17s. The heavy bombardment planes of the 8th American Air Force are preparing for a series of missions. Targets, German oil, the German aircraft industry, ball bearing plants, steel factories, strategic bombardment. Mission, strategic bombardment. Destroy German industry. Destroy the manufacturing plants of Germany. 
precision bombardment by day at high altitude. This is the plan. Only if these bombers can reach the far borders of Germany can the plan succeed. Unfortunately, there are no fighter planes capable of accompanying these bombers all the way to the target. The B-17s will have to fight their way in by themselves. Summer 1943, the mass-produced American Armada is sent out to destroy the industrial strength of Germany. Single-engine fighter planes, escort for the bombers. From England, these fighters have enough fuel to fly only as far as the Rhine. There, they will have to turn back. The English Channel. A German patrol boat discovers the bomber stream. Berlin, German central control. The bomber stream will be followed now minute by minute. The Germans do not immediately commit their defensive fighter planes. Central control will try to determine which part of the bomber stream is a feint. The German fighter pilots are held on the ground until the decision is made. Von Ludwig Föhnhoff nach Ludwig Kurfürst. Von Ludwig Fünnef nach Ludwig Kurfürst. Via Fünnef. Estimated Luftwaffe strength on the Western Front, 1,002 first-line fighters capable of effective opposition. The planes are good. They are not as good as they should be because after four years of war, the Germans have not taken time out to redesign a new fighter. Nevertheless, production is at an all-time high. The Luftwaffe pilots are experienced and good. They are guided towards the bombers by an effective ground radar system that is closely following the Americans. With careful ground control, the Luftwaffe becomes doubly dangerous. As the Americans penetrate deeper, the Germans will have time to attack, land, refuel, and reattack the bombers. 
It is clear that long-range American fighters are needed to protect the bombers all the way to the target and back. The bombers must protect themselves by flying close together and combining their machine gun fire. More skillful German pilots attack head-on, diving through the formation. The American defense is weakest against head-on attacks. But the attacks from the rear are equally dangerous. The rear attack gives the Luftwaffe pilots more time to correct their aim. As soon as an American bomber leaves formation, the German fighters attack it in waves. The American bombers are under orders not to break formation to aid wounded planes. By breaking formation, the rescuing plane itself becomes vulnerable. The wounded planes must fight by themselves. While the air battle goes on, there is little time to take care of the wounded. The German fighters break off the battle. Anti-aircraft shells are dead ahead. The bombers must fly in formation through the anti-aircraft fire. It's solid enough to walk on. Navigator and a pilot approaching the IP. That's worth time over there. Hey, Bill, how about a little base of action for the bomber? When the bombers reach the target area, each plane is set on automatic control. The bomb site and the bombardier are flying the aircraft. For accuracy, the approach to the target must be straight and level. No evasive action can be taken. These are the most vulnerable minutes of the mission. Although the planes are under intensive anti-aircraft fire, the bombardier must be accurate and deliberate.
Sometimes the bombing is precise. Sometimes the bombs fall wide of the target. A thousand men gather at the flight lines an hour before the planes are due back. A thousand different men from a thousand different places. Yet all the lives coming together under two emotions, anxiety and guilt. Anxiety. Who among the men at breakfast would not be there for dinner? What voices would never again be heard? And guilt. The inequality of sacrifice. Why was I safe on the ground while they were being lost in the sky? cost is too high. The cost is far too high. Three men out of ten are being lost. Most Western armies stop an infantry attack when the casualties reach 7%. Elite Corps will stop at 12% casualties. But the American Air Force in the fall of 1943 did not stop, although some missions were costing 30%.
Almost unnoticed except by the keenest observers, the Achilles tendon of Germany has been nicked. Germany's oil reserves are low to begin with, and the American attack against the oil refineries is a dangerous threat. A modern army does not fight on its belly. It fights on oil. Without oil, the Wehrmacht and the Luftwaffe can neither move nor fight. But the situation is not yet serious. The daylight attacks of 1943 are too weak. The Germans begin to recruit 350,000 slave laborers to repair oil damage as quickly as possible. Ploesti, the richest oil target in Europe, is quickly being rebuilt. The oil is still there, still untouched. This kind of bombing, daylight strategic bombing, is not the kind that most Europeans know. It is by night that the terror comes from the air. It is by night that the English search their skies for bombers. The same sky is searched on the other side of the channel. For there is another way to bomb, not daylight precision bombardment, but pattern bombing, the bombing of a whole city by night. With night fighters, radar, and ground control, the defenders fight for their cities. by high explosives, but by incendiaries, a whole city is set afire. The military objectives are burn out German industry and the manufacturing plants in the German cities. The political objectives are, by fire raids, break the will of the German people to resist. The largest fires in the history of man consume the German cities. Each light is a fire.
This is the psychological use of terror. Its purpose is to demoralize the population. The Germans did it to England in 1940. The English do it to the Germans in 1943. But it does not work. Though individuals may crack, the German people draw closer together. Faced with the total physical destruction of their state, the German people have no alternative but to turn to their army and their leaders. Nazis are more strongly in power than ever. In spite of the bombings in 1943, the German production rate increases. Germany is producing more material of war than ever. German industry is in a renaissance. German production is dispersed. Small scattered plants instead of large ones. Then a remarkable breakthrough. Jets, the ME-262 series. 120 miles an hour faster than the best Allied fighter, these planes are capable of ripping apart the Allied bomber stream. The appearance of the German jets is the greatest shock the Allied air forces will face in World War II. This plane makes obsolete every preceding aircraft. In early 1944, there are not enough jets to throw into the battle. Hitler does not see this plane as a fighter against the Allied bombers, but as a light bomber to attack the Allied land armies. He commands that the ME-262 be converted into a fighter bomber. The Luftwaffe protests. Used as defensive fighters, these planes can save Germany from saturation bombings. But Hitler is firm. These planes will not be used against the Allied bomber streams. His decision sentences the German cities to rubble. January 1944. The English fog and the German Air Force have virtually stopped the American deep penetrations. But the attack must be resumed. The planes and men must be called on again, whatever the losses will be. By simple arithmetic, the flyers know they may not have long to live. 30% losses some missions. The odds are, after five missions, they will be 150% dead. Reinforcements. A new long-range American fighter, the F-51. This new plane has one significant feature. It carries enough fuel to reach to the far frontiers of Germany. And it is a better aircraft than any fighter the Germans have, except the German jets. New bombers are flown across the Atlantic. Planes bulge with machine gun turrets. 14 machine guns. To protect against the costly head-on attacks of the German fighters, a new turret is added under the chin of the B-17. New crews to replace those lost over Germany. The range of the conventional Allied fighter is too short. 
To increase the range of action, fuel tanks are improvised to hang from the bellies of the planes. How shall all this be used? The British, foreseeing the invasion of Europe, want to shift the bombers against German communications and railroads. The Americans want to concentrate on oil and jet fighter factories. Eisenhower makes a command decision. The Americans will be permitted to carry out an offensive against German oil. The oil offensive will have higher priority than the attack against German communications. The American Air Force by day, the Royal Air Force by night. It's a gamble, a carefully calculated risk, but a risk nevertheless. February 1944, the daylight air offensive is resumed. The long-range fighter escort will be provided by the Free French, the RAF, and the American Air Force. Now begins a new tactic for supremacy in German skies. We hope these fighters equipped with extra fuel tanks will make the difference. The fighters now have sufficient range to escort the bombers to and from the targets. American bomber and fighter formations meet 20,000 feet above the French coast. German fighters wait for the bombers to come to them. Once the American fighters leave the bombers, the Germans will make their attack. The escorting American fighters have not withdrawn. They are accompanying the bombers deeper into Germany than ever before. Bombers are approaching the target. The Germans are forced to attack. The American fighter screen jettisons fuel tanks and moves to intercept.
There would always be some opposition. The sky would never be clear of German fighters in flank. But now with a new radar bomb site that sees through clouds, fog and smoke, the Americans can reach the German oil. Day after day, the planes lay siege to oil by the thousands of tons, by the ten thousands of tons. As the oil goes up in smoke, it is the end of grand German strategy. It makes no difference that the rest of German industry is producing more and more tanks and planes. There is simply not enough fuel to train new pilots. Without oil, the new German jets can't get off the ground. The German oil doesn't disappear in one day, but it disappears. There was no single victory that ended the war, but the loss of German oil ranks with the Russian victory at Stalingrad. At the time, neither side knows that the Achilles tendon has been severed. In the mystical world of intuition that Hitler inhabits, Germany can be defended by anti-aircraft guns. The Luftwaffe is written off. New weapons are coming secret weapons that will revolutionize warfare and turn the tide. Germany must sacrifice now until the secret weapons are ready. As for the threat of invasion, he is building the Atlantic Wall. It will bleed the Allies to death should they invade Europe. Von Rundstedt and Rommel are charged with the defense of Europe. The two men are in sharp disagreement. Von Rundstedt believes that the Atlantic Wall should be held thinly with the bulk of German strength in a mobile reserve. Rommel wants to put all his reserves on the beach and drive the Allies back into the sea. Rommel prevails. The Atlantic Wall is being built. The German military faith is frozen in concrete. Since the German army no longer can move well, it will fight from a set position but there are 1,500 miles of beach to defend. The propaganda films made at this time do not show the gaps in the Atlantic Wall. Its greatest strength is built too far to the north, yet it is a formidable defensive weapon. In spite of all their intelligence reports, the Germans don't know where the Allied blow is to fall. Then on May 2nd, Hitler guesses that the Allied invasion will be made in Normandy. Although the general staff argues with him, he insists that the defenses be built up in Normandy. Two first-class divisions are sent as reinforcements into the Normandy Peninsula. In England, more than one million ground troops ready themselves and their equipment for the invasion. Impromptu fresh air lessons are held in French. Want you to dance, to drink? The French verb to drink is boire.
In the French monetary system, five francs is worth 10 cents. The Allied armies wait in the cool spring for the signal. Europe is to be invaded. The channel is to be crossed. A continent is to be liberated. The map of Europe is studied and particular attention is paid to the Normandy Peninsula. Every Allied effort is made to make the Germans believe that the attack will be further to the north. The point of the attack has been chosen. Everything is in readiness. Fighter pilots are told an area 150 miles around Normandy is to be sealed off. All bridges, railroads, barges, all transportation is to be interdicted. The last means of communications available to the Wehrmacht are to be attacked. The coast of France, a leap over the Atlantic wall. 50 feet over occupied Europe. Target ahead. The bridges over the Seine and the Loire. Target ahead. Barge traffic on the rivers of France waterborne ammunition trains. Target ahead, supply trucks on the roads of France. Target ahead, the railways of France, prime mover of all German supply to their coastal defenses. By the last week of May, only a few trains a day venture west of Paris.
June 6, 1944, the coast of Normandy. Germans have lost their oil and their cities. They've lost the air above Europe and the seas around the continent. But the German army is still intact. Until the German army is defeated on land, the Third Reich cannot be destroyed. June 6, 1944, the beaches of France. The German plan is to contain the attack at all costs, drive the invaders back into the sea. The Germans have reserves but cannot move them into the battle area. The front is established. For six weeks, the Germans contained the Allied attack. <laughs> July 1944. This is the continent of Europe which is to be liberated from the Nazis. This is the Republic of France on whose soil the issue will be decided. The Normandy Peninsula, the battlefield. On the right, the Canadians and British face the German Panzer Group West. In the center and on the left, the 1st United States Army faces the 7th German Army. And in reserve, the American 3rd Army. The German line is hard at the front, but soft in the rear. The Allied breakthrough will take place at San Lo. Two thousand bombers are called on to carpet bomb a small rectangle west of San Lo. Two thousand bombers unload in an area three miles long and nine hundred yards deep. Report from the German 7th Army telephone log, July 25th, 1944, quote, My front line looks like the face of the moon. All the forward Panzer Grenadier positions are knocked out. At least 70% of my troops are out of action, dead, wounded, crazed, or numbed. The situation is hopeless, end quote.
crust of German resistance is broken. Now through the hole in the German lines pours the third American army. The character of the war has changed. It is now a war of movement. A war on foot has become a war on wheels and wings. August 1944, the American Third Army is moving rapidly into Brittany. The German Seventh Army makes a desperate attempt to contain the breakout. A counterattack is ordered at Mortain. The last available reserves of aircraft and armor are called on. Once Mortain is taken, the drive is to continue to the sea. This will break the American Third Army and force a discontinuation of the whole attack. But the German attack is too weak, and the consequences are disastrous. The Americans hold behind the city. Meanwhile, the Americans run the flank to Argentan. The British take Falaise. The German Seventh Army tries to retreat. It finds itself all but cut off. Some German units slipped through the trap. General Eisenhower and his staff decide that if the pocket cannot be completely closed on the ground, it will be blocked from the air. The tactical air forces are called on to attack the retreating elements of the German 7th, 15th, and 19th armies. There will be no aerial opposition to these planes. Without oil and gasoline, the German air force cannot put up a defense. The Allies hold such overwhelming aerial superiority that anything moving in daylight is a target. For the German commanders, these fighter bombers destroy all previous doctrines of warfare. The classic rules of retreat are useless. The roads are traps. The lines of communication are cut. The Germans have lost France. This is what remains of the German 7th Army. These were the vehicles that were to stand on the Seine and fight.
These were the troops that were to hold a line from Paris to the sea. There will be no stand this side of Paris. 50,000 troops surrender and there is no organized German army left in France. August 17, 1944, Paris. As the Allies drive towards Paris, German commander von Holtitz, disobeying Hitler's order to demolish the city, begins pulling his troops out quietly. but the Parisians will not let them retreat. Arms hidden since 1940 come into the open. The resistance, underground since 1940, comes into the open. Paris will welcome the Allied troops, but Paris wants to liberate itself. Suddenly, the Germans must fight their way out of the city. Oh. August 23rd, Paris begins to build barricades. A French division is ordered to come to the aid of the capital. General Leclerc receives words that the resistance needs help. In Paris, von Koltitz issues an ultimatum. Either the fighting stops or he will order the bombing of the city but he is afraid that history will remember him as the man who destroyed Paris. The fighting continues. Claire is meeting little German opposition, but he is being slowed by the deliriously happy French who want to ride his tanks into the capital. The American 4th Division is also ordered to Paris. The competition speeds Leclerc's men. In Paris, there has been an attempt to arrange a ceasefire with the Germans, but feelings run too high on both sides. August 24th, the Allies enter the outskirts of the city. Resistance and police leaders point out the remaining German strong points.
August 25th. French soldiers in American uniform take up the fight inside the city. August 25, 1944. When the French tanks gain the Arch of Triumph, von Koltitz surrenders his garrison. After 1,500 days of occupation, Paris is free. des minutes, nous le sentons tous, qui séparent chacune de nos pauvres vies. Paris, Paris outragé, Paris brisé, Paris martyrisé, mais Paris libéré. For the Allies, 1944 is a summer of liberation. Rome, Marseille, Brussels, and Antwerp. It is a time when the war should have ended. The German army in retreat to the German frontier. Most of the professional members of the German general staff know that the war is lost. The Allies are pushing from the west, the Russians are attacking from the east. In Germany, Hitler is hanging the German soldiers who have tried to assassinate him. Above all, there is no oil and no transport. The less important units of the German army in southern France must get back home by diverse means. At the same time, the Allied armies have come to a temporary halt because of lack of fuel. And on both sides, there is much talk of a new secret weapon, a weapon that can still turn the tide for the Germans. Germany, November 1944. The last available reserves. A hidden new army being scraped together. A new force, the young. The fanatic. A new weapon, the secret weapon, the V2. It will arc 55 miles above the Earth. It will hit the ground at 2,500 miles an hour. There is no defense against it. Originally designed to hit New York City from Germany, the V-2 now has a different purpose. If the V-2 attack is successful, perhaps the West will grant Germany a separate peace or modify the demand for unconditional surrender. In early December, 1,000 V-2s are placed in position. 
they are to be fired against London and Antwerp. It is a new weapon, but it will be used for the old purposes of terrorizing the civilian population. Yet the weapon is a failure. As the Germans did not crack under the British fire bombings, the British do not crack under the German V2s. December 1944. The Germans have stabilized the front along the German border. But there is a weak spot in the Allied lines, the Ardennes. The Germans plan to bulge through the Ardennes sees the American oil just behind the front and sweep on to Antwerp. If Antwerp falls, four Allied armies will be cut off. For two months, the Germans have hoarded oil and reserves. They have chosen their time correctly. A low fog covers the Ardennes, and at the beginning of the attack, the German army cannot be seen from the air. At the beginning, the attack goes well. The American lines break open and the German troops are told they will spend Christmas in Paris. Though American materiel is captured, the Germans never reach the oil supplies. of the bulge slows. The German tanks no longer plunge ahead. The fight becomes a battle between infantry units. One city that should have fallen does not, Baston. On December 24th, the sun breaks out and Allied air power is again overhead. It is the end of the last German attack in the West. Under air cover, the British and Americans compress the bulge and wipe it out. February 1945, the Siegfried Line is breached and the Allies spill into the flat Rhineland. Germans blow their bridges and retreat behind the Rhine. The Allied advance is so swift that the bridge at Remagen is captured before the Germans can destroy it. The last natural barrier in Germany is breached.
Eisenhower, Montgomery, and Bradley must make a decision. The British argue that for post-war peace in Europe, the capture of Berlin by the West instead of the Russians is a necessity. The Americans prefer to destroy the German army still in the field. Thus, Berlin is abandoned to the Soviets, and the Allies will advance only as far as the River Elbe. Eight hundred miles between Moscow and Berlin. The Red Army has covered them all. The Soviets move into the German capital. take the city, block by block, street by street, hole by hole. Flamethrowers arc from apartment to apartment. April 25th, 1945. The first United States Army meets the first Ukrainian army at the River Elbe. One minute after 11, May 8, 1945, the war is over. Germany lost the war in the air a year before she lost the war on the ground. When Germany lost the air war, this is what she lost. Germany lost her oil. Without oil, Germany lost her air power. Germany lost her sea power. Germany lost her transportation net. Germany lost her industry. Without industry, Germany lost the war.
May 9, 1945, freedom returns to Western Europe. to the villains and the collaborators. Those who lived through the war shall always carry the scars of war. begins the long journey home.